Hi, my name's Mary and my job title is Community Fundraising Executive. I work for an animal charity called International Animal Rescue. What I do day to day really, really changes, um, especially working for a charity where we have very spontaneous rescues and um, campaigns that happen. Um, that's a bit unpredictable just because we don't know what's going to happen with our projects on a day to day basis. My particular role focuses on community fundraising, so how I can get the community involved in fundraising for the charity, global fundraising events such as um, Cakes for Apes or the Rainforest Run that I organise, which are events that get the public involved and get them doing something exciting for the charity to raise funds for us. I do a lot of responding to emails, talking to clients over the telephone. I do lots of design work um, because I have quite a creative design background. So I spend a lot of my time making social media posts or creating fundraising materials such as certificates and posters. And at the moment, I'm also organising a big street art mural in Brighton. So we're having an artist paint a very large mural for one of our campaigns. So it's never boring. I always have something new and exciting to do. <laughs> So the main skills that you need to work in community fundraising are great communication skills because you're dealing with people face to face, great time management and organisation skills, just being able to stick to deadlines. I would say good written communication skills as well. So writing emails that are informative and clear and precise. I think the sort of person that this, this job suits is someone who is open and bubbly and confident and has a real passion for what they do. Um, I think you can't really inspire a community to get involved fundraising if you're not inspired yourself. Willing to be able to adapt to situations and willing to take on responsibility and willing to be creative and sometimes put in a bit of your own spare time as well. I would say the best thing that I do within my job role is it's just the content. It's sometimes I get to spend hours looking through photos of orangutans <laughs> to make beautiful leaflets um, to try and encourage people to raise funds. So that's my favourite part is just being able to connect with the animals themselves. I would think probably the biggest challenge within working within charities is probably the pay because you don't get a very big salary. And I know that probably sounds a bit fickle to be like, oh, I want to get paid more money. Um, but I think it's important to get paid for what you do and the skills that you have. They're obviously doing really good in the world and they're saving animals and the money needs to go towards the project. So it's completely understandable. But I think that is something to consider when going into charity work. I would say another challenge with working for a small organisation is you do have to take on quite a lot of responsibility. In terms of earning potential, um, I started my job as a community fundraising assistant and that was pretty much straight out of university. Um, I started on a salary of 17 and a half K. So outside of London, that isn't too bad for a starting salary. So I went to university in Leeds and I did a degree in fashion marketing, which is quite far from animal charities. Um, but I did a year in industry and in that year in industry, I worked doing social media and marketing and I also did events management. So I gained a lot of skills um, that would be perfect for community fundraising and events management in general. When I did my degree, I was looking to go into fashion as a career, um, but studying it full time made me realize how detrimental the fashion industry is to the environment. And the environment and animal welfare is something that I'm really passionate about. I think having the state, like having the accomplishment of going to university is really beneficial. But what's more important than ever is getting actual work experience. But I understand how hard that is to do because a lot of the time internships are unpaid. So when it comes to challenges that I've faced, um, I've suffered with lots of mental health issues and I also have an invisible disability. So I have postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is quite a long word to say, uh, POTS for short, but um, that's something that I've really struggled with throughout my adolescence. So growing up and going to university was really, really difficult having um, an invisible illness. I was able to sort of push through and apply myself in ways that 
able-bodied people perhaps couldn't. So trying to work online and do lots of research from my own home. Uh, so any tips I would have to young people today is just to really try and apply yourself. Just realize the skills and the potential that you have and have confidence in yourself, especially young women. I know when I was around the age of 15, I was insecure and I was nervous and I didn't believe in myself. And as I've grown and I've become a woman of 24, 25 years old, I've realized the potential that I have. Mm -hmm.